Hello Buddhas, today we are going to be talking about why we're so afraid to ask. Now, Buddhas, before we get started, I've got a playlist down below with over 100 Buddha billionaire videos that you can watch to accelerate your spiritual awakening. Now, on to today's subject. Asking, in the law of attraction community, can sometimes be misinterpreted as admitting lack or not having, and if you have to ask for things, you don't have them, and because you don't have them, you'll never get them if you're always asking for them. Which is not necessarily wrong, but it's a very negative kind of defeatist attitude to take. As Abraham constantly says, we experience that which we do not want in order to launch the rockets of desires of that which we do want. And I personally believe that asking for a change of circumstance, asking for that specific car, asking for specific people, doing the wanting, the asking, the loving, the looking for the next best thing does not hold you back and does not limit you from receiving it. And here's why. If I'm in a state where I am completely and utterly satisfied with what I have and I'm just completely at ease and okay with that and I spend absolutely no time looking into what I could have, or what I might want to have, or what I would want to change, then the universe is going to look at me and say, hey, Alex, you're pretty happy with what you've got. You've got everything you need. I have no need to put any effort into changing that. You're just going to stay where you are. And for many people, that may be a lovely and beautiful and even Buddha level thing to do. But it's also the flip side of that coin, which is that we are in an ever expanding universe. We are the reason that the universe is expanding. And our contentment with what we have is a really good baseline. But accepting that and never looking for more means that you are stagnated and you're not going anywhere. And though the universe will give you anything that you ultimately desire, it is there to fulfill our desires. It's not going to do that unless you put in the work. And I have been readjusting what I consider to be work for the last little while now. And I've come to the conclusion that the true work that we have here on this planet as human beings, as individuals, as conscious awareness is the expansion. It is coming to terms with what we want. It is asking for more. It is thinking of and receiving and expanding our sphere of existence. But we have to be somewhat smart about it and we have to be loving and intelligent and caring about it. Because if we hate what we have, Buddhas, and you're constantly complaining, you're like, this life's not good enough, Urgh. well, then you're, you're just going to get more of that because that's where you're putting an emotional energy into and what you hate is equivalent to what you love at an energetic level. It's that focus and intention on it. And I think this is where we get tripped up a little bit because as society has programmed us to believe that asking for things is wrong and we should just be happy with what we have and just kind of eat our, eat our soup and be okay with that and, and never, never want to expand because that would mean that we're thinking for ourselves and looking to actually accomplish something. I'd like to take a somewhat opposite direction. And that is to love and appreciate everything that I have right now. Because I just made a video that probably came out a couple days ago where I am pointing out the fact that we have an absolute plethora, an abundance of stuff and things all over the place that we don't appreciate. So if you can do both and appreciate what you have and 
constantly be grateful and thankful and loving towards the environment you're already in. But be okay as well and don't be guilty and don't feel like you're hurting anyone or don't feel like you're gonna get shafted by the universe because you're saying, you know, I really like what I've got going on here, but it would be really nice if I had a car because then I could expand my sphere of influence, my area of, 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 of being able to travel. Well, the universe is not gonna look at that and say, Haha, Alex wants a car, so we're never gonna give him a car. No, the universe is actually gonna say, well, that Alex fellow, he's taking care of the stuff he already has. He seems like an upright guy. He's got appreciation for everything that he's already achieved. Well, maybe it would make sense for him to have a car and let's figure out a fun circumstance for that to, to happen. So, in asking for what we want, we are expanding our sphere of the universe to levels of things that we don't quite have yet in our real reality surroundings, however you want to describe that. But by living in a state of accepting that everything that I'm asking for and want is already mine, and all I have to do essentially is patiently wait for it to show up, which does not mean sitting on the couch and doing nothing all day, but if I want that car, it does mean that I trust that the universe is going to provide the right opportunities in order for me to achieve that. And I do understand that by wanting and stating out loud, I want this car, that the universe is going to say, okie dokie, it's coming. I'm not, it's not just going to appear out of nowhere because I'm not at that point yet where I can manifest things out of nowhere, out of thin air. But at a molecular level, there's nothing that's impossible. So Buddhas, I just wanted to remind you all that it is absolutely okay, if not crucial, to ask because you have not, because you ask not, which is James 3-4, I think, in the Bible. And I'm not a religious person, but when I heard that statement, it hit me. And I think I've talked about it before, but you have not because you ask not is so important to understand and to get over the guilt of wanting to have a different or better or more exciting or more you experience because what's happening in your surroundings is a reflection of how you see yourself and Buddhas, the reason that that is so important and so utterly profound is also the most important thing. And that is to love yourself.